Well, here we go again with another Plowbender's Custom Creations. And before we get on to today's custom, I just want to thank my viewers and subscribers and everyone who has supported me in this channel and everyone that enjoys Plowbender's Custom Creations because I was actually looking yesterday and I noticed that this series of videos is proving to be the most popular on this channel. In fact, I was looking at the uh, video featuring the DeLorean Time Machine from Back to the Future Part 3, and that's actually pretty high on the view charts in my opinion. And even the most recent one, which was uh, featuring the Lack of Trucking and Transport Peterbilt 359 with Covered Wagon, that's getting up there too. And, you know, it's you viewers that are, you know, making this popular to the point it is. And, I mean, I really appreciate it. And I do have plans for the 10th Plowbender's Custom Creations video. It's going to be a little more than just, oh, here's a custom I built. Take a look at it. So, um, hopefully you guys will enjoy it. And I look forward to that when we get to that point. But, uh, again, thank you all for your continued viewership. And we'll go ahead and get on to today's custom, which is not the Salas Chalmers. Today we'll be looking at my custom 164 scale pulling tractor. Now, I don't really know what to call this because I didn't start with the actual tractor as a basis. This was actually a Hot Wheels tractor. And it came in a three pack with a tractor trailer truck. And you might be able to see on the bottom here, uh, Mattel calls it the drag tour and this was not a very appealing tractor when I got it as you can see and it required quite a bit of work to get it to the beast that you see now and uh, quite a bit of time went into this and uh, the first thing I will say was in order to get it to look right I had to stretch the frame and that was done with styrene. You can probably see how the frame was stretched here. A little bit of styrene to move it back. A uh, little bit of uh, framework on the sides. I could show you better if that wheel wasn't there, but I'm not taking these off. Uh, but then also a small piece of uh, tubing, I believe, was installed there for an axle. And after that, uh, the frame was to the proper length. Now, the fenders on this tractor, uh, they probably don't look correct. Uh, but I don't know, I'm fine with it personally. Those I got off of a donor tractor, which I can actually show you an example here. Uh, this is the, or something similar to this is what I use, and it's just a generic tractor. I, I basically call this an Ertl ripoff, and it's most of it's plastic, but the fenders, in my opinion, look pretty good, and I just had to cut those off from the main die cast frame of the body. This is made by a company called, I don't know, I've heard people call it Maisto, Misto, Macedo. I mean, whatever you call it, it's just not a superior brand like Ertl. So, it was uh, perfect for parts, and I believe I also took the seat as well. But, uh, yeah, I cut the fenders off and cut them to fit on the new frame. And as you can see there, uh, you might be able to see, I'm not sure, the... Uh, seat in there I used as well. That's probably not accurate to, you know, what your uh, NTPA regulations would be. But uh, I thought they looked pretty good, these fenders, and I don't know why I painted the tail lights. Uh, maybe just a little bit of uh, extra character. Uh, there was a hole in the back of the fenders that I filled in with a piece of stainless steel, which I thought uh, added a nice look to it. And as for the roll cage, the roll cage is actually built from scratch. I can show you what it starts out as. It actually has to be bent and cut to shape. Uh, this is what you start with. And, uh, yeah. So it can be uh, made to work with multiple tractors, which uh, looked pretty good when I was done with it. And as for the paint, I tried to match the metallic orange that was on the hood of the tractor. Uh, not really close to a match, but it works for me, I guess. Uh, another thing I did was there was excessive use of chrome on this tractor. 
and I kind of dulled it down a little bit. The frame was painted satin black and as well as a few other parts were painted satin black. I left the engine the chrome color. The stacks were originally black. I painted uh, the lower part black, satin black and then the stacks were painted chrome and I carefully painted in the uh, the grating you might call it. And uh, yeah, another thing I did uh, custom build parts for this tractor is the wheelie bars. Those were custom built from brass and styrene. Uh, there's also a hitch there to hook the tractor to a sled, which I do have. And another thing, the wheels. The wheels had to be scratch built and these are made by uh, turning aluminum on a lathe for the rims and then the tires are custom uh, rubber castings as well and uh, they definitely look better than what was on there before and I did try putting just regular tractor tires on this uh, but it again just didn't look right so I went with the actual pulling tires and yeah it just really lifted the look. Uh, another thing I added a weight bar to the front of the tractor with the uh, tow hitch but the only thing I'm missing still is some proper suitcase weights to go on the front of this as well. So uh, when I get around to uh, making some or finding some, I'll go ahead and uh, put them on here. Uh, another thing I did to this tractor was originally the Hot Wheels logo was on the front grill. And the problem I had with that is it wasn't as easy as just getting a little bit of gasoline and rubbing the decal off. No, this was actually in the casting. And so what I did was I carefully ground it down with the Dremel tool and I put an LED light bar on the front. Don't ask why, that's just I felt was the best thing I could do to cover up that hideous decal. Now the only thing I don't like about this tractor is that Hot Wheels, when they made it, the steering wheel is connected to the hood. And number one, it's too large. Number two, you know, the steering wheel moves with the hood. I mean, that's, uh, that ought to be hard to try to hold on to that when you're pulling. <laughs> but uh, it was something I left just because modifying it would be uh, quite a bit more work than I wanted to do. And either way, I wanted to try to leave the original paint of the hood. Uh, you know, while it still leaves a lot to be desired, I think it looks pretty badass for what it is. And uh, trying to think if there's anything else I can say about this. Uh, yeah, I mean, overall, it was a build I was quite impressed with. And compared to what I started with, it's definitely an improvement in my opinion. But yeah, so uh, that's going to be it. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this tractor, uh, and also, you know, uh, what you think of uh, my design choices, and uh, constructive criticism is welcome, of course. But, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for this Plowbender's Custom Creations video, and we'll see you guys next time.